Okay, good morning, everyone. Buenos días. Uh, most of you know me already, but for you who don't, uh, my name is Rodrigo Salas. I live in Monterrey, Mexico, and I am here because in the year 2000, my wife got diagnosed with a leiomyosarcoma. And after one surgery, that metastasis to deliver, we came back, and we went to the U.S. In the U.S., uh, here in Houston, Texas, they told us that she didn't have a leiomyosarcoma, but a gist. And that it was so fortunate because there was no treatment available, and that she had six months to live. That was in, in, uh, in June 2000. Uh, we went to MD Anderson, uh, a, a, a cancer center well known uh, worldwide, and uh, we were told that our best bet was to participate in a clinical trial. And the clinical trial was for a new compound called STI-571, now called Glivec or Imatinib. So we were part of the first 30 patients who took part of the, of the clinical trial. In the beginning, Glivec worked well. Then uh, my wife began to get resistance, and we participated in other four uh, clinical trials from other, other drugs. Uh, at the end, we ran out of time, and in, in December 2005, my wife uh, passed away. And like Pita said, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, being in the right place in the right time was really important. For us, being in the right uh, time in the right place was being where we could have access to clinical trials. And I might say that you have to be in the right place the right time and be very stubborn in order to make it happen. Because law by itself uh, not always helps you. So part of being in the right place in the right time was that I had to met, I was fortunate to meet uh, people that were on the same problem with, with us. And, and on those days we began uh, exchanging emails uh, to, to tell how our patients were doing with side effects of this new clinical trial and so on. And, and as my friend Norman says, fast forward 19 years and we are here in, in New Horizon. So that was the birth of, 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 uh, of the live raft group on those days. Now, uh, real world evidence through, through all these years, it has, it has been clear to us that in order to have patients with better out outcome, we needed information. We needed to know how they are, they are doing. And, and that's how the project Salud Condatos began as a spin-off of the LIRAT group. Salud Condatos is a, a project to, to make cancer registries or patient registries all through Latin America. This initiative began four years ago. On those days, uh, we, in, in the beginning, when we had our, our patient organization, and seeing all the, the list serves of the Lyra group, it was clear to us that the bad guys were the doctors and the good guys were the patients. And, and, mo and most of, of, of the talks over there were people complaining of the doctor of the doctors and, and, and we saying how we are going to defend patients against the doctors because they need better treatment, a, a, a better way of... But at the end of the day, in order to get information, it was clear to us that we needed to work with the doctors. We needed to collaborate with them and make them part of the team. And that's one of, of, the, of the outcomes of the Salud Conductus project. So let me begin to talk a little bit about this. in order to assess patient outcomes, as you said, and, and we have been talking about that, this in, in the last couple of days. What we do is that we collect data from patients. We follow up frequently and empower patients with information so they can take control of the disease. In the case of, of Latin America, where when there are big public systems, patients go to the doctor, and most of the patients are not knowledgeable, Sometimes they don't know how to read. 
So they just sit down in front of the doctor and don't ask a question. They don't know about the disease and they just go when they have an appointment. One of the things that we, that we do is that we have a, a, a patient registry in, in Mexico. We use an Excel, Excel spreadsheet. And we know when patients are going to the doctor for the next appointment. So we call them before and we tell them what questions to ask. We call them after the appointment to see how they are doing. If they have uh, new studies, if they are progressing, know how are the side effects. And we have been doing this, and, and uh, it has been helpful also. Because we have in our, in our organization in Mexico a nutritionist. And we advise uh, our patients on how to take a correct diet, diet to minimize side effects. Minimizing side, side effects is important because there is more compliance. Our patients, I'm glad to say, that they all take in a better way the, their medicines than in other parts of the world. So they have better outcomes because they do not stop taking the drug. So we generate data in order to understand better how the, the disease is, uh, is developing in the countries. Now results. When we began four years ago, the Salud con Datos project, we had around 70 patients in our, in our database. And when we uh, decided to collaborate with doctors, to go with them, and to try to, to, to make it a win-win situation, the doctors began to open their, their files to us, and we give them back information so they can make publications. And from then on, we have been growing exponentially, and right now we have a little bit over 530 Mexican alive GIST patients in our registry. Also, this information has been given uh, to our doctors, so they have published uh, two posters already in ASCO and in, in ESMO, in Europe and in the US. And we have over three uh, papers ongoing right now. So we're beginning to get knowledge about how our people are doing in our countries. So in our case, for us, we have the Salud Con Datos project has given us the benefits, both internal for our organization and external. The internal benefits have been, first, a way to follow up our patients. A, a cancer registry for us is not just a database. It's a way to follow up our patients. We use these documents, this Excel spreadsheet, and in the future we're going to use the platform of the LIRAS group to better take care of our patients. That's a huge outcome. As I, as I told you, Having a closer uh, look at how pa our patients are doing, they comply better with taking the drug and they have better outcomes. Also, in, in the case of our countries, uh, generics are beginning to appear in the market and we need to know if our patients do well in generics or they do not. And I would like to tell you a brief story. The first generic of Imatinib was authorized in Mexico uh, like three years ago. Well, it happened that it was our, our Mexican FDA authorized this uh, generic for the treatment of CML, not for the treatment of this. But our government buys one imatinib, and that was the generic. So we, made, we filed a complaint to our health uh, authorities saying that we were concerned that our patients were receiving a, 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 uh, a treatment that was not authorized for, for, for the disease. Clearly it was a mistake on their part, but anyway, they couldn't, they, they couldn't continue to give something that was not authorized, and they get back to, to Novartis in this case to buy from them again uh, the, the imagine. And I uh, also the generic but to buy again from from the market, and, and that's how using this tool to see how our patients are doing in generics gave us that opportunity. 
Also, not all the patients in Mexico have access to treatment because we have a large part of the population in the informal market. I mean, they, they, uh, they, they are not official uh, workers and the employers do not pay health benefits and because they are by their own. So we advise them on how to get to the public uh, sector again and to have access to the drugs. And, and all these have been benefits of the Salud Cordatos project. Now talking about the, uh, external outcomes. Uh, having a, a patient registry, we knew about the benefits of having a patient registry. And it was clear to us that it was not fair to only advocate for these patients. But we wanted to advocate for cancer patients in general. So we need, and there is no cancer registry in Mexico right now. So we want to, be, to begin in our home state, in the home state of Nuevo León. We have a population of about 5 million people, the third largest in, in Mexico. And we presented a citizen initiative to the Congress in order for the Congress to modify the health law in order to be mandatory to create and maintain a cancer registry in our home state. One year later, uh, Maripaz really had, that is the director of the, of the, of the of organization, has been instrumental in this, in this happening. She has opened doors that no one can open. But, so it was authorized, the health law was modified, and then we also had meetings with, uh, with the budget committee of Congress to have a budget assigned to this project. We already got it, and as we speak, the National Cancer Institute and our home state are working together in order to begin a, a cancer registry for next year. Also, Part of the population in Mexico do not have access to, as they work in an informal market, they don't have access to, to, to the health system. There's a kind of insurance uh, uh, that is called the Seguro Popular, and Seguro Popular does not cover rare diseases and does not cover this. So we have been working for three years and using this information of, of the patient registry, we have been able to show them the amount of patients, the, the patients that do not have access to treatment. And we have shown them that if they don't have access to imatinib or sunitinib in this case, they are going to do worse and they will need surgery. And surgery is covered by the Seguro Popular. And it's more expensive to have four surgeries than to get uh, an oral chemotherapy. So, up to now, we have we have a a, a partial approve, approving uh, approvement for for the disease to be part of the Seguro Popular. We still need to work on on some specifics with the new government, but I positive that we're going to, to to make it in the next year. Also, we have been generating uh, scientific knowledge, as I just told you, uh, because the doctors that are working with us have access to, to our to our numbers to all the information, and they are beginning to, 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 to publish. And this cross-collaboration with petitions is part or are an outcome of this Salud Condatos project. So all this that began with uh, an exercise of gathering information has evolved in something else and has given us tools to advocate in a more, uh, in, in a more important way in our country. Not just in Chile, in Mexico, and our plan in the Salud Condados project is to expand to Colombia. We have here two representatives from Colombia. And we need to get to Argentina and Brazil that are big, big and important countries. So we are doing very well. Actually, we, we, are, we are very excited about uh, all these outcomes. And I would like to, to, to thank proposal to amend the health law was prepared, I already told you that, the budget was obtained also, collaboration with national agencies also. And uh, the partial approved uh, uh, improvement, I already talked to you about that. We delivered a dossier. Here, the, the pharmaceutical industry was important help to us because in order for us, we needed to submit a dossier 
with a lot of information regarding the treatments. And both uh, Pfizer, Bayer, and, and Novartis uh, helped us to, to have all the, the financials, for example, on, on the cost of the, of, the, of the treatment and everything, they helped very much. These are the papers that have been published already. Uh, as you can see, we have we have a couple, and this is the first time that, that Mexican uh, doctors have been publishing about about this. We have 85 specialists that are that are working with us. And, and, and the most important part of this is that, that we are working as a team. They are referring patients to us. And, and, and that's how we have grown our patient registry. We have been working with a couple of, of doctors from different, and this is also interesting. We have been working with doctors from different institutions. In Mexico, like, like, like everyone is jealous of the other one, and that there's, like, a, a, they, they compete, professionally speaking, but we have been able to see them on the, same, on, on the same table, share information and publish together. And we are doing this, this uh, in the next few months with Chile. So, Dr. Garrido and the doctors in Mexico are going to publish together. Next step will be to have doctors from the U.S., Chile and Mexico published together. Next step will be those three plus Argentina and Brazil. Not very common. So this has been this has been the, the, the effort of, uh, of our Fundación GIST Mexico and Alianza GIST regarding the salud con uh, Of course, being in the right place in the right time and working hard has been. Uh, the important part of all this effort. Thank you very much, and you have some questions for me or Tiga, we'll be glad to answer.